So you break open your shell like a bad nut, one whiff of the late Cretaceous air, and you quickly realize that life 83 million years ago as a Gigantoraptor, or Gigantoraptor, isn't all that it's cracked up to be. It seems that your mom, where is she, by the way, laid a clutch of eggs, arranged in a way that has you and your brothers teetering at the edges of the nest. Strange. Did she want other dinosaurs to easily grab you as soon as you're born? Or is this a marketing campaign for future mating partners? Anyway, there she is. As she makes her way to the middle, you realize that she put you there because she loved you, and she didn't want you to be crushed when she sat down. Ah, oh, isn't that sweet? But there you are, nine chicken eggs tall, with little stumpy wings. You have a toothless beak, sharp as garden shears, and two big eyes that, for a baby, are surprisingly unsettling. Your Velociraptor cousins, which are little brats which have a bad case of Napoleon complex, went and got seedy Hollywood agents to make them look as scary as a T-Rex. But in reality, they're nothing more than an action figure version of you. Your name might sound ominous, but really, you're just hoping nobody notices your bare, scaly legs. Your body is a feathered masterpiece. Those fluffy, proto-feathers of yours are all the rage. They weren't for flying, because spoiler alert, you'll never fly. But they kept you warm and made you look like a prehistoric Muppet. You had long, gangly legs, think flamingo but beefier, and a tail that wagged when you walked. You were about as coordinated as Bambi on roller skates, and just as terrifying. But hey, you'd grow into it. Your first day out of the egg was all about finding your feet, and snacks. Others were quick to call you raptor, but you're not a raptor, are you? You're an over-raptorosaur, part turkey, part dinosaur, and all kinds of odd. You waddled more than you ran, and when you did get a burst of speed, it looked like a toddler who's just learned what their legs are for. Which, I guess, you are at this point. Your feather was puffed up as you got scared. Big eyes like the T-Rex like to size you up, and you were growing fast, but not fast enough to dissuade them from gobbling you up. And unfortunately for you, you weren't built to fight. You didn't use your knife-like toe claws like your cousins did, so no slashing through other animals for you. You eat more like a Californian. You use your claws to dig up roots, pick fruit, and when nobody was looking, you cheated on your diet with small bugs or lizards. You lived in a hot, swampy neighborhood full of weirdos, with long-napped sauropods who ate like it was an Olympic sport, little mammals scurrying underfoot, and the occasional T-Rex who looked at you like a chicken drumstick. Early life wasn't easy, but you made it work. You found food, avoided predators, and you didn't trip over your own feet, most of the time. And then you start to enter that awkward teenage phase of being a gigantoraptor, except for your kind, those teen years lasted about five minutes, because you grew like a rocket-fueled fern. As you grew, you learned to love the wide open space. Warm, swampy wetlands, open plains, and forests with just enough trees to provide shade, but not too many to cramp your style. You weren't exactly a jungle gym kind of dinosaur. You needed room to stretch those gangly legs and a nice patch of land to shuffle around looking for food. Your ideal neighborhood was a prehistoric buffet. Plants, seeds, small critters, whatever the ground served up, you're having it. On a normal day, you would waddle over to a nice patch of greenery, plop yourself down like a giant feathered couch potato, and munch away. Then you'd wander around, dig into some dirt, chase off some smaller dinos trying to snag your meal, and then you'd rinse and repeat. As a growing boy, you were hungry. All. The. Time. Growing at the rate of a modern teenager with unlimited access to fast food meant you were always foraging for your next snack. But you had an advantage. You were a non-selective feeder. You could eat just about anything. Plants? Sure. Nuts and seeds? Yum. Insects, small lizards, or the occasional egg. Keep them coming, boss. Your toothless jaw and horny beak were made for multi-tools. Perfect for breaking, snipping, and chomping. But it got messy at times. I mean, what did you expect? You have the dexterity of a kid opening a bag of chips with scissors. Efficient, but it's not pretty. Your favorite food was the sweet, sweet crunch of ferns. They were the potato chips of your prehistoric world. Tasty and endlessly satisfying. For the most part, you get along well with the other small critters around you. Little herbivores like Protoceratops didn't mind sharing space, and you weren't a threat to them. They were the quiet neighbors that didn't throw loud dino parties. But you know who were, though? Big carnivores like the Electrosaurus and Tabarasaurus. Those jerks were always giving you a hard time. They tried to mess with you, steal your food, or worse, make a meal out of you. And let's not forget those sneaky Deinonychuses. These were smaller theropods who loved to gang up and steal what scraps they could, which meant you spent a lot of time fluffing up your feathers and squawking to look intimidating. Did it work? Sometimes. But other times, you just had to accept that life was full of freeloaders. Before you knew it, you're seven years old, and enormous. You're already bigger than most of your theropod cousins, growing faster than a human kid guzzling growth hormone. At this point, you were close to towering over the landscape. You were big, but not that big yet. Your size was both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it kept the smaller troublemakers in check. But on the other hand, it made you a walking billboard for every predator in the area. Come and get it, boys! Your silhouette seemed to scream at anyone who would pay attention. 
You keep your nose clean for a few more years though, and you finally make it to full-blown Gigantoraptor status. You're a sight to behold, over 26 feet long, 16 feet tall, and weighing a little over 2 tons. You're the size of a small school bus, but with the same feathers and the same toothless grin. Those long legs have gotten used to your life-on-the-edge lifestyle. Powerful, fast, and built for striding across the open plains. You couldn't fly. That dream died millions of years ago. But you could run like the wind and peck with precision. What's one thing you could do now that you couldn't do as a youngster? You could intimidate. No more worrying about smaller dinos swiping your lunch. Your full-grown size made you a walking do-not-disturb sign. Plus, you could hold your own in a fight. Though, like a pro bodybuilder, you're still more into scaring off trouble than actually throwing down. Life for you was not just about surviving, it was about thriving. And you were doing both pretty well. But one fateful morning, as you have your first drink of the day, you see a lady gigantoraptor on the other side of the river. You do that slightly creepy, incredibly awkward stare at each other, and with that one look, you knew you had to have her. You didn't have chocolates or flowers to give her, but you had feathers, so you strut around and fluff up your feathers to woo her. If your flirting worked, she would let her give you babies. If not, you humiliated yourself for nothing. Luckily for you, she was into it. She wasn't just impressed by your plumage, but also by your ability to provide and protect. She's no shrinking violet. This was a dinosaur mom built for business. When it came to make a family, let's just say the process was quick. You didn't have time for Netflix and chill. Your old lady laid a clutch of eggs and she was fiercely protective of them. She'd use her feathered arms like built-in umbrella, shielding the eggs from the harsh sun, rain, and those sneaky egg-stealing critters like the Overaptor. Yet another cousin who gave your family name a bad rap. Meanwhile, you were the provider, foraging for food and standing guard. Parenting wasn't a team effort, but let's be honest, she did most of the heavy lifting. As a fully grown Gigantoraptor, you were a force to be reckoned with. You could take down small creatures for your children to feed on, but again, you weren't built to be a predator. Your size and beak were better suited for intimidation and defense rather than active hunting. And even if you were intimidating, there were still creatures that could take you down. For example, the Tavarosaurus was still the biggest bully on the block, and if one decided to come after you, your best bet was to run. Even in adulthood, life wasn't without its challenges. You had to stay sharp and keep your feathers out of trouble. As you hit the later part of your life, you start to feel the weight of your years. Those long legs that once carried you effortlessly across the plains started to ache, and your once fluffy feathers got a little bit scraggly. Your beak dulled, and you weren't quite as quick to snap up a snack. You're officially in the old-timer category. But what sucked the most about being an old Gigantoraptor is the younger dinos didn't respect you at all. Predators saw you as an easy target, and even scavengers got bolder about picking at your leftovers. Your sense of smell dulled, so finding food became a challenge, and your joints creaked like an old rocking chair. The truth is, your kind didn't have cushy retirements. Most Gigantoraptors didn't die of old age. They either lost to a predator, disease, or starvation when they couldn't keep up anymore. If you were lucky, you'd find a place to rest quietly and drift off peacefully, letting nature take its course. If not, well, the Tabarasaurus had to eat anyway. But even in death, you played a role in your ecosystem. Your body nourished the soil, fed scavengers, and contributed to the endless cycle of life. And you can do the same by subscribing to Extinct Explorer.